Hello again everybody and welcome to another episode in the countdown of my favorite 400 cards from Half Century of Collecting Sports Cards. These were the cards last week and we are currently at number 364 and that card is a 1955 Bowman Early Win. 55 Bowman for a lot of people, and I'm probably included in that. I was not real excited with the design, especially on those first 64 cards where they use that lighter wood grain. After that, they used a darker wood grain for guys like Mantle, Marin, A's, and I thought those cards ended up a lot more attractive. Early win is a 300 game winner, right on the nose, 300 games. Took him 23 years to get there, but uh, he did have some good years, 520 win seasons. Had a Cy Young at age 39 for the 1959 Go-Go Sox. It made the World Series. Uh, he led the league in strikeouts a couple of times. He uh, had a uh, pretty solid career war of 61. So there we go, 55 Bowman early win. Next on the list, we got a Diamond Stars card from 1935. <clears throat> and this is a Hall of Fame catcher in early Lombardi. Now Diamond Stars was made from 33 to 35, and the fronts look the same each year, but the backs changed. Um, basically the biographical part of the card, as well as just the note of the copyright, uh, saying which year it is, is when you can see 1935, made by the National Schickel Company in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Now Lombardi, he had a, a career 38 war as a catcher, which got him into the Hall of Fame. He won two batting titles and in 1938, one of those years, he was uh, league MVP with the Cincinnati Reds. He finished his career with almost 1,800 hits, 190 homers, 306 lifetime batting average. And uh, Bill James dubbed him the slowest man ever to play Major League Baseball well. And that was towards the end of his career when he was 6'3", about 300 pounds. Next on the list, We've got Steady Eddie, uh, Mr. Consistent, a 1978 rookie card here of Eddie Murray. Now, Eddie Murray was a uh, one of these elusive, I think there's only 11 on that list of 500 home runs, 3,000 career strikeouts. This first year here, he's a DH first baseman because Lee May was still with the team who played first base most of the time. But after that, he was mostly a, a first baseman. Uh, wasn't necessarily a great fielder, but just a really consistent hitter with the first 20 years of his career having a low RBI total of 76. That's just an amazing stat. He never won an MVP, but five years or six years, five of them consecutive, he was in the top five. And a couple of those, he was number two in MVP. Uh, these 78 cards are probably, again, not one of the more exciting tops cards. But they do have a lot of really cool in-action shots, and this is one of those that's kind of a close-cropped in-action shot, and then you add that top all-star rookie on his chest in the corner there, and I just think that one comes out really cool again. Next, we've got a football card, and this is a 1955 top. So last year, they are in the uh, bigger cards. Um, 56 baseball, they still stayed bigger, but then by 56 football, the card size shrunk down to the standard size of today. But this card is of Norm Van Brocklin. And he is a, a University of Oregon guy who had 12 really good years in the NFL. He uh, amazingly still holds the record for the most uh, passing yards in a single game. 554 back in 1951. You'd think with all the passing teams do nowadays, that would have been passed. But... He, in that game, was 27 for 41, passing with five touchdowns and 544 yards, or 554 yards. And it really was one of his first games where he really got to play the whole game because he, he as a Hall of Fame quarterback, shared duty those first few years with another Hall of Fame quarterback, Bob Waterfield, seen here in his uh, 1949 Leaf. And... That is a leaf card that just has really, really cool color. If somebody wouldn't have written 49 in the corner there, this would just be an awesome conditioned both front and back card of a Hall of Famer. But uh, Van Brocklin later became a head coach. Uh, he was the Minnesota Vikings inaugural coach, 1961. 
And then after that, I coached about um, 12 years total. Um, but you can see here, front and back of that 55 Tops football card. Okay, one interesting thing too, I like that ball. That looks like, I don't know, like an old Woolworths kind of a ball for little kids with the white football with the stripe. I don't know if they ever actually use that in football games or if they just use that as a prop, but it looks kind of cool on that card. All right, next we've got a 1923 Willard chocolate card of Miller Huggins. So Miller Huggins is a longtime manager. He started in 1913 managing the St. Louis Cardinals, ended up getting a young Rogers Hornsby, and then he managed the Yankees from 1918 to 29. So besides Hornsby, he also got to manage uh, Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth, three of the um, probably best players in Major League history. With the Yankees, he won six AL pennants, three world championships. He, uh, he actually was a lawyer, got his uh, law degree from the University of Cincinnati, but uh, realizing good ball players could make more money, and he was a pretty good ball player as well as a second baseman, uh, one of his professors, who was William Howard Taft at the time, encouraged him to play baseball instead, and he actually never practiced law. In that 1929 year, his last year, he actually fell ill and died, so he didn't finish out the season. And in 1932, the first uh, Yankee Stadium monument was put up, and it was Miller Huggins. So he was a monument before Gehrig and Ruth. Cool Willard chocolate card. Next, we've got a 1975 Tops of Herb Washington. Now, the 75 is kind of the Dave's the splashy designs, uh, splashy looking designs on the card with the purple and pink on this one. Uh, the A's had splashy looking uniforms, and then they hired this uh, speedster who was a, just a world class sprinter. He had played high school baseball, but nothing beyond that. And he actually was drafted in football, too, by the Baltimore Colts. Um, but this guy, he could just run, and he's the only card ever that his position is listed as pinch runner and nothing else. And because that's all he ever did, he played 105 career games, never batted, never played the field. The only thing he did was run. Um, he stole quite a few bases, but he also got caught a lot for a guy that fast. And as you can see on his card here, Ran the 50-yard dash in five seconds flat and the 60-yard dash in 5.8 seconds. Now, um, my son, a few of these guys that we coach, go to these uh, prospect camps, and one of the things they make you do is run the 60-yard dash, and the fastest guys there are in the upper sixes. This guy was 5.8. That's just incredibly fast. Now, my son is not fast at all, and he's like the lower sevens for his 60-yard dash, um, but he can hit and run. Hit and, not run, hit and pitch, throw pretty well. But Herb Washington, 5.8, 60-yard dash. Then we've got a 1970 card of probably my favorite player of all time, Rod Carew. Uh, his 70 tops, now some people don't like that 70 tops, gray border design, but I actually really like it. Um, I think that, along with maybe my favorite back, of a card because it's so bright in that yellow and blue and you can just read it real well even with my getting old eyes can easily actually see everything that they talk about on these cards. This Carew card I think has some decent color on the front. You can kind of show them uh, posing basically with a finished uh, batting pose. Got a little bit of a kind of a smirky smile after coming off his first batting title. He's only 23 years old um, this season. Um, he's going to end up winning a total of seven batting titles before he's done. But just a cool card, 1970 Rod Carew, and we're going to see a, four, a few more Carews before we're done, so I won't talk too much about them. But that is it for today. And we will see you again next time, and I think we're going to do an SGC uh, return for my next one.